Do you find real estate exciting? I do. That's why I practice real estate. I help people build wealth through real estate. I help people buy and sell homes here in the Las Vegas Valley. It's also why I provide these educational videos every month. Market update for the Las Vegas Valley for resale single family homes. And this one, the companion video, market update, resale condo and townhome data. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what's going on, what has been going on, what likely will be taking place over the course of the next month. I am Justin Miller with the Chung Miller Group. As I mentioned, I help people build wealth through real estate. And this is the June 2024 real estate market update for condos and townhomes here in the Las Vegas Valley. Okay, so very first piece of information we want to look at, we want to look at condo pricing. What was the median sale price for condos here in the Valley this past month? Now remember, this is the June 2024 market update, which means that we look at data from the prior month. We want to know what actually took place what the truth is about the market. And the only way we can know that is by looking at the actual data for all the transactions that actually took place. And so from that, we know number of transactions. We also know the, the uh, supply in the marketplace. We also know what price was for the median price. In fact, we know the whole range, right? I can look at lots of different pricing information, but the most interesting for most people is that median price. Median price means half of transactions took place at a lower price and half of transactions took place at a higher price. So the median is the exact middle number. And that's a good way to look at kind of an average except that we, in some manner, trim off the highest prices and the lowest prices. It's not literally they're trimmed away, but we don't care what those are. The length of the tails in statistical terminology doesn't matter. We just need to know half of transactions were above, half of transactions were below. So median sale price on condos in the Las Vegas Valley for May of 2024 $245,000. Now you may remember from last month's market update that we had had kind of a big spike in prices in April. And so it's normal that that means we would come down slightly and we did, we came down 1.3%. We had been at 248,300, so we came down $3,300 on the median. Now, at first blush, that might sound problematic, but again, we'd had a big run up the month before, and so this is simply settling back down to trend. Now, the other way to think about this is we are now only $5,000 below the peak, the very highest price that we've ever seen on condos here in the Las Vegas Valley. So we're, we're right up there. Uh, next to that highest number, uh, right? Last month, uh, the, the rather the month prior in April, we had been, the gap had been only $1,700. Now the gap is $5,000, but we're not going down, we're going up. Uh, we are up 7.9% from the $227,000 median sale price that we had seen in May of 2023. Now, interesting comparison to single family homes, single family year over year prices had gone up 6.25%. So for condos, we are up 7.9%. Strong pricing trend, right? 7.9% is above median growth, annual growth that we see in the real estate market year over year over year, if we sort of normalize that to take out highs and lows. So we've got strong price growth here. Okay. Well, price growth is irrelevant if we don't have any transactions. So let's look at how many transactions actually occurred. We had 363 sales, closed transactions, took place in the condo market here in the Las Vegas Valley last month in May of 2024. That is down slightly, it's down 1.4% or five condo units, right? It's a meaningless number here but we're down five units from the April number, 368. We are up 
0.0% from the 349 that had taken place last year in May. Okay, so that suggests that demand is actually pretty flat, right, because number of closed transactions is an indicator of demand. You don't get a closed transaction unless you have a buyer entering into a contract and seeing that contract all the way through to actually close on the transaction. So demand is measured by closed supply, approximately flat, down five units from the prior month. Well, we also have contracts that are written. A buyer comes along, enters into a contract with the seller where that contract is not yet closed. So that's a pending home sale. So what did pending look like? Well, pending very strong last month, 423 uh, condo contracts were written that have not yet closed. That number is up 19.5% from 354 that had been entered into in April that had not yet closed by the end of April. Uh, so that number is really strong. And by the way, not only is the 423 up significantly from the prior month, it also is significantly higher than the number of closed transactions, which suggests we're going to see increased number of closed transactions looking forward for the month of June. So stay tuned. Next video, uh, next month's video will show that, that we'll actually have some significant increase in the number of closed sales in condos for Las Vegas Valley. Okay. How does that look year over year? We're up 27.4% from 332 pending contracts written in May of 2023, up from 332 again to 423. We're up uh, 91 contracts from what had been written, uh, but not yet closed in May of the prior year. So that's really good. Um, I will say, interestingly, these sales numbers, while they're down five, they are, other than the prior month, other than April of 2024, they're actually the highest number that we've seen since June of 2022. So uh, condo sales are actually doing pretty well here in the Las Vegas Valley as we uh, head toward the summer selling season. Okay, so those are the two measures of demand, number of uh, closed sales and number of contracts written or pending sales. Well, we need supply in the market to be able to continue to make sales. So how does supply look? Supply, 998 condos available for sale at the end of May of 2024. That is down 0.7%. It's down uh, seven units from 1,005 that had been available for sale at the end of April. So that's problematic. We're not down a lot, but we're down again. We've been down very significantly on supply in the condo market. And this actually is mirrored in supply with townhomes and supply with single family homes. We just don't have a lot of inventory for buyers to be able to look at. And so this is a challenge. It, it actually is helping to hold down the number of transactions because a buyer who cannot find what they're looking for cannot buy. And it's also causing prices to go higher. We're definitely seeing the trend in prices is, is higher. And it's because there's not enough supply. And prices are going higher even though interest rates remain really elevated right around that 7.0% line. So not enough supply. Uh, supply is up about 50% from where we had bottomed in the condo market, but we are still considerably below what would be a healthy market. We're looking at about half the inventory that would be healthy in this market. Uh, okay. We have one other measure of supply and that is the number of newly listed resale condos that came into the market during the course of May. And that number is 580. That's up 5.1% from 552. So that's a, a, a significant gain. It's a little less than we'd still expect to be seeing seasonally at this time of year, but at least we've got a gain there and it's holding us close to flat on overall inventory. 
Now we are up 47.2% to uh, from uh, 394 to the 580 relative to where we were last year. So inventory supply measured as uh, actual for sale units or as new entrants into the market remain really quite weak and keep are keeping us at about half the supply that we would expect to see at this time of year in a normally functioning market. That's impacting again, number of transactions, and it's impacting prices because prices are going higher because there's insufficient supply to meet the demand that's actually out there. Okay, one other condo statistic, and then we'll turn our attention to townhomes, and that is back on market. Now, I've been talking about back on market problematically for four years now, since, uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, and certainly after the pandemic uh, closings had been re re uh, released, had been alleviated uh, in 2020, we've seen really high back on market numbers. What's back on market mean? It means a contract had been written, buyer and seller agreed, entered into contract for the purchase of or the sale of a condo or whatever you know market segment type, depending on which back on market number we're looking at but in this instance for a condo. Those contracts generally proceed to close. They become closed sales. Some number of contracts always fall out. That number of contracts falling out, usually in the 10 to 12% range, if we look back pre-pandemic, we would see some contracts fail. They fail for a variety of reasons, but we've been looking at very elevated numbers since the beginning of the pandemic, and that's continued, we've been looking at 25 to 33% of all contracts are failing. So what's the actual statistic? Well, we had 160 condo contracts come back into the market. That means that a contract failed and the seller relisted the property for sale. Now, if a contract failed and a seller decided to do something else with their property, it's not a back on market. There are hidden failures that are hard to account for, but this number is the back on market, meaning seller relisted their property after it failed. 160 in, in May of 2024. It's, it's a terrible number. It's 31.3% of all condo contracts failed, collapsed, came back into the market. Make sure you're talking to me or whomever your real estate agent is. If it's not me, find out what's going on. Ask specific detailed questions to make sure you're understanding that your agent understands what's taking place and how to protect you, whether you're a buyer or a seller. This is, this is one of the most critical functions that real estate agents need to be serving in the current market is protecting their clients from failed contracts, right? Yeah, a buyer's agent can drive you around, you can look at things. That's a low level functionality. There's the negotiating into contract, that's critical. There's the negotiating through contract, that's critical. There's the keeping somebody in a viable contract. That's super important, especially when practically a third of contracts are failing right now. A lot of agents out there who just don't understand what's going on, why it's happening, and they lead you into something that may look nice that falls apart. And that doesn't help you. Again, whether you're a buyer or seller, it's actually a devastating outcome to a contract to have it fail. Very highly elevated. Make sure you're looking for agents who understand what's going on, who, can, who understand it sufficiently that they can explain it to you and to help protect you to get through a contract. Because a contract that looks really nice doesn't matter whatsoever if it doesn't actually close. Okay, so uh, we'll turn our attention now to townhomes, but again, I am Justin Miller with the Chong Miller Group. Please, if you like these videos, you find them helpful, smash the like button, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and please share this information, share these videos with your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues, your family members, whomever you think would be better off having actual information about what's really taking place 
in the real estate market. I provide this information so that you're better informed, and when you're better informed, you make better decisions about whether you're, you should buy or you should sell, whether you need to buy, whether you need to sell, and how best to actually do that. All right, townhomes. What's going on in the townhome market? May 2024, townhome median price, $350,000. Now this is up 1.4%. And by the way, this gives you a really good indicator of why I separate condos and townhomes, even though most all of the other people out there who talk about the market have no idea why condos and townhomes are actually two separate populations of housing types, and they mix them together as multifamily housing. And so over the past two months, we've seen headlines in the local newspapers, oh, multifamily housing is at record prices. Well, it's not actually. Last month, uh, meaning April of 2024, condo prices had gone up and were 17,000, I'm sorry, $1,700 below the highest price they'd ever achieved. This month they came down slightly and were $5,000 below the highest level they achieved. Well, in April of 2024, townhome prices were 345, meaning they were $10,000 below the um, highest they had ever achieved. Now we've come up we're up 1.4% to 350. We're still $5,000 below the highest level that townhome prices have achieved. So how is it that the newspaper, with all of the resources that the newspaper has, is saying that two months in a row we've been at record high prices for multifamily housing? Because the mix of housing changes, and so you get more townhomes perhaps, pulling up the average across two distinct population of, uh, of data, it gives you a statistically anomalous reading that says, oh, we're our highest prices ever. It's BS, it's not the case. What we are is we're actually 5,000 below on condos from the highest price ever, we're $5,000 below on uh, townhomes from the highest price ever. We're getting there. We will be hitting new highs later on this year, but we're not there right now. We're $5,000 below on townhomes. Now we are up 9.4% from $320,000 that we had seen in May of 2023. That is in a very strong 9.4% increase in townhome pricing. Remember, condo pricing, we were up 7.9%, and single-family housing pricing, we were up 6.25% year over year. So townhomes outperformed in the month of May of 2024. Not unexpected, if you've been paying attention to my videos about what we would be seeing. I'll also point out that we had for uh, uh, nine or so months in the townhome space, been in a trading range, a pricing range. Well, we have now clearly two months in a row broken out on the upside from that range. So we are not putting in new record highs, but we are clearly plowing forward on townhome pricing. We're not going to be going back to what we had seen um, from the uh, from the, the drawdown that we'd seen from the May of 2022 high. We're headed back to that number and we'll be exceeding that soon. Okay, so as I'd said with the condo segment, pricing, nice, but what does it mean in terms of demand and what does it mean in terms of supply? So demand, number of townhomes sold, actually closed escrow, 256. That is up 21.4% from the 197 that closed escrow in April of 2024. That number is really strong. And one of the reasons I suggested we already knew that we were going to be looking at a strong May number for pricing and sales for townhomes was because I also look at the pendings, which are another measure of supply. Well, pending in, uh, in April had been 229. Uh, we've come down slightly from that. We came down to 220. Uh, so we're down 3.9% on pendings. But again, on sales, we increased all the way to 256, up 21.4%.
Now, what about year over year on sales? We came down 1.9% from 261. We came down five units to 256. That's 1.9%. On pending for townhomes, we came down 12.7% from 252 to 220. That's kind of a significant drop on pendings that we need to be paying attention to. It suggests that the June numbers in townhomes are going to be a little bit weak. I don't know exactly how that's going to translate um, pricing for townhomes in June. I suspect that's going to hold close to flat. But remember, our pricing trend is up, our demand trend is up, despite what we saw with pendings in uh, May of 2024 on townhomes. And remember, part of the reason we get these larger fluctuations in the townhome space is because this market's really small. We're looking at something that's just, it's about 11% the size of the single family housing market here in the Las Vegas Valley. At this time, it's normally something about 7% the size of the single family home market. Town home market's just really small. And so every individual transaction can be changing the statistical uh, uh, analysis by half a point. And so uh, the statistics may sometimes be overstating the actual trends that are in place. That's why sometimes I point out to you, this is a difference of five units, so um, a difference of nine units on pending from April to May, even though that meant that we were down 3.9%. All right, uh, now that's demand, right? Both sales and pending contracts that were entered into. What about supply? Well, that is standing inventory and that is newly listed resale. So standing inventory, for sale townhomes at the end of May 2024, 444. And this is down, it's down 3.5% from 460 that we saw standing inventory of townhomes in April of 2024. Further depletion of inventory. This has just been an ongoing trend for the past almost two years now. For the past one and three quarter years now, we've been seeing inventory just churned through. And to confirm that, we're down 17.6% from 539 that were in standing inventory in May of 2023 down to 444. We've got just about two months worth of standing inventory in the townhome space. That's a third of where we should be. Normal inventory we should be looking at five to six months worth of supply. We are looking at one third of where we should be. And that, that small inventory is creating upward pricing pressure, even with high interest rates, because demand is present. There's not enough supply for buyers to be looking at. They're bidding against each other, trying to get into contracts, and that's pushing some, uh, prices higher. Okay. What about newly listed townhomes? And this is really problematic. We've got 283 newly listed resale townhomes that came into the market in May of 2024. That is down 7.2% from the 305 newly listed that we saw in April. Now remember, we're still in that spring housing market. We should be seeing increased inventory every month from January through June, we should be seeing increased new listings every month, January through June. We're not seeing that. We are down, we're down again, we're down 7.2%. We're also down 5.7% from the 300 newly listed that we saw in uh, May of 2023. We are sitting at inventory levels that look similar to the inventory levels and the newly listed levels that we were saying in 2009, where we were in the midst of the great financial uh, crisis. This, these numbers, especially on townhomes, really bad. Also on single family homes, really bad. Condo supply has been a little bit better. We're sitting at about half of normal instead of a third of normal, but still very constrained for condos as well. Okay, one other statistic, townhomes back on market. These are failed contracts that came back into the market 
89. Now that number sounds lower, but that's still 27.9% of all townhome contracts that were written failed in May of 2024. Stunningly bad information, right? And this has been four years, literally, of 25 to 33% of contracts are failing and coming back into the market. That means a seller lost the contract and wants to still sell, right? Because they're relisting their property for sale. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a back in market. These are the sellers who really want to sell or need to sell because they're relisting and these contracts are failing. Make sure you're talking to your agent. Make sure you've got an agent you can talk to who can understand this and who can explain it to you. And if you don't, please reach out to us. I would love to be able to sit down with you and talk to you about these issues, about all the issues, including why contracts are failing and what we can do at the Chong Miller Group to help you get through a contract, to help you build a contract that's going to be strong and durable and that's going to stick together and get you all the way through to the end. Okay. So I am Justin Miller with the Chong Miller Group. At the Chong Miller Group, we help people buy and sell homes. We help people build wealth through real estate, partly by giving them lots of information about what's actually taking place in the market. And it's not just I'm spewing this information at you. This is the same kind of information that I use to help our clients. So I can explain to my clients what's actually going on and I can implement the solutions with their advice and consent about how we're actually going to work through a real estate transaction. Whether you're buying or selling, whether it's a condo or townhome or a single family home, whether it's investment property or primary residence. Please, again, share this content with those that you think may benefit from it. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks.